Awesome, awesome. Super excited about tonight, man. I'm, I am just so excited. But here's what I want to do. Uh, I, I think there's a bunch of younger people here. And so we're going to do what I do often at camps that I'm at with young people. So I'm going to give the opportunity here to kind of just kind of break the ice, kind of get into things, kind of have some fun for, for me, you to get to know me a little bit better just for a moment or two. Is this, if you are under the age of 24, raise your hand. If you're under the age of 24, raise your hand. Okay, a bunch of you. Okay. <laughs> If you're 25, you can participate too. Okay, but if you'd like to, you can put your hands down. So I'm gonna give three people the opportunity just to get to know me better by asking me any question. Nothing's off limits. I'll answer anything that'll help you or that is like just random facts about me or favorite pizza toppings in my life or just random stories or you just wanna ask me something really random just so you can get to know me better uh, as a church so we can hang out a little bit better tonight. So if you're, un- if you're the age of 25 or 24 or younger and have any random question in the world to get to know me better, just raise your hand. I'll call on you. It can be ridiculous or silly or super deep and spiritual or whatever. And if not, we'll just move on. But this is your opportunity. Okay, what's your name? What's your question, bro? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> this, uh, this was a mistake. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the hardest trial that God's ever put me through, uh, I think often is just the, the ability to get past your past. I think that's often the trial because it's not just a one-time trial. It's a daily trial to often make sure that I'm not just living in my past. I'm living in the future God has for me. I think a lot of us have these, these past moments that we keep living in our past, even though God's given us a way better future. So that's, uh, that's one. Okay, two more questions. It can be silly, deep, whatever. Okay, what's your name in the, oh, we had dinner or lunch with other people, obviously. Okay, what's your, what's your name? Zoe, what's your question? How did I start my relationship with God? So I started when I was a kid. I feel like I gave my life to Jesus, you know, for the first time. I think I gave my life to Jesus about 18,000 times in my life. Um, but the first, like, real main time, uh, I, was, I was in sixth grade. I was at a youth camp, actually, with my friend Ashley. Uh, we went to this youth camp, and we were in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And for some reason, it, everything just clicked for me. In one camp, in one weekend, I gave my life to Jesus. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, like we talked about this morning, and I felt called to ministry really all in one big culmination moment. Uh, but the truth is every day is a day I, I wake up and I choose Jesus. And so uh, that's, that's always the goal. Okay. Third one, it can be ridiculous, spiritual, random, whatever. Last one. Okay. What's your name? What's your question? What's my favorite color? That's a great question. Thank you for ending on a light note. Okay. <laughs> your friends have been very intense. Um, usually people just ask about pizza or something. Um, my favorite color, I think is honestly, this sounds darker than it needs to be, but is black because I just wear all black everything all of the time. Uh, but if you don't like that answer, then um, whatever. What's your, what's your favorite color, Eden? Green, okay, that's a good one. Okay, um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get into things uh, tonight. Uh, and here's the thing, we have, uh, I wrote two books. One is called The Holy Spirit is on a Bird. It is 10 different chapters on who Holy Spirit is. The other book is called Better Than Jesus. Jesus himself said that it is better for us to have a relationship with, with Holy Spirit. And so this book talks about why Jesus says it is better for us to have Holy Spirit. So here's the thing, if you haven't gotten these yet, but you'd like to get one of these, can you raise your hand? I might give one away. Okay, you ma'am, if you can, yeah, you if you can come up. Okay, and then we also have these, uh, they're not with me, but on the table, we have a, a prayer card. You can take one of these. Just pick one of them. Okay, there you go. Uh, we have prayer cards, and they are $5,000 of prayer cards. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. And then, okay, this one is better than Jesus. Okay, you can come on up, ma'am. Uh, and so, if you're, and you can give it up for the people who got the free stuff. There we go. Yeah. You know, there's nothing worse than clapping for someone who won something that you didn't win. Let's be honest. Um, no, but uh, so we'll have those available. They're cheaper here than on Amazon. And, and, and if you know somebody who wants to go deeper in what we're talking about this morning and tonight, I'd encourage you to check it out and give it to them. And if you're in a place financially where you can't afford it, just can't make it happen, just let me know and we'll just, we'll gift it to you. Um, and don't, don't lie about that because that'd be really weird. Okay, but what I want to do though, uh, really tonight, we're going to talk about faith for healing. Uh, but before we do that. I forgot this morning. I'm, I'm still learning how to do this. So I have a baby. And so I figured it's good to show you a picture of my kid. So this is my kid. Yeah, he's, oh, man, he's so cool. He's so cool. Okay, you can put, you can take that down. Okay, but uh, that's Moses. He's amazing. He is eight months old. And today he had a big moment. He ate cheese for the first time. So everything is a huge deal um, that we do now. So, um, But today we're going to talk about faith for healing. And I want to start off by talking about the first time I personally ever prayed for someone and saw them get better. 
Um, but I'm curious, because I had, okay, the first time I ever saw someone get healed and feel better after I prayed for them, I was 21 years old. So it took me 21 years to ever see a miracle happen before my eyes for praying for somebody. And I'm curious, at least for me, this was it, is that I went a very long time praying for people to be healed, and I never saw that happen. And I don't know about anybody else, but I've gone through that. I've experienced that. I've had loved ones pass away, and I used to get kind of frustrated with that, kind of confused by it. But let me tell you, before we kind of get into anything, let me tell you this. If you've ever prayed before, and if you kind of quit praying because God didn't one time, let me tell you this. Just because God didn't doesn't mean that God doesn't. Just because God didn't doesn't mean that God doesn't. And because I'm not basing my future off of my past experiences, I'm basing my future off of what Jesus says in the word. And so we're going to dive into this. But I want to tell you the first time I ever saw this, I was 21 years old. I was in Atlanta where my the church is that we base out of in Atlanta. Is, and we had a service similar to this. Uh, now, granted, you know, in Atlanta, everything is ridiculously huge. There's a ton of people who came to this, this event. And I was there not as a pastor or a preacher. I was there as a person. I was sitting on the front row, just really trying to engage, trying to learn more about healing. And <clears throat> excuse me. And there was three, uh, three weeks of this, you know, on a Sunday night. And then on the last time, it was the, actually the service where they were going to pray for anyone who was sick. And so the, the altar time comes, I'm sitting on the front row, nothing crazy is happening yet, but they had different altar workers um, at the altars, you know, altar leaders, prayer leaders, and then uh, someone would stand at the altar, and then a line would form in front of them, and it would get prayed over and prayed over, kind of just get through it, pretty, uh, pretty systematic, which worked out really well, except for the fact that there were hundreds of people waiting to get prayed for. There were so many people that each person out of the 15 people in the altars, they had a line that was so long, it went out the doors of the church and started wrapping around the building of the church. I sat on the front row looking around and I was thinking this, this is going to take forever. If only some of these lazy Christians would get up and go and pray for some people, this would happen, this would be a lot quicker. As... I was being a lazy Christian sitting on the chair. And so I'm like judging everyone around me for not being spiritual enough. And then I felt this, uh, this thing called a nudge of Holy Spirit to go and pray for people. But I, I want to always be covered. That's why we have a board. That's why we have coverings. We have pastors, counselors, leaders in our life. So I went up to my, my pastor, my leader, and I said, hey, um, would, can I pray for anybody? Like, can I, I'd love to pray. And my pastor said something I will never forget. She said this, yes, we'll take anybody wasn't the biggest vote of confidence in my life. That wasn't like the greatest start to the story. And I was like, okay. And so I, I ended up actually going to the very middle, uh, the very front of uh, the altar. And all of a sudden, within a moment, it, people lined up. I, I had 30 people lined up. And I prayed for somebody and nothing happened. And I prayed for two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 more people and nothing is happening. Nothing is happening at all. And to my, to my left, there's a guy who's praying pretty loudly, and he's seeing very incredible moments. People are literally getting out of wheelchairs. And then the lady next to me on my right was a very quiet prayer. She was praying very quietly, and people were like having deaf ears. They were opening up. Then the guy next to me who was like blind eyes were seeing. And then, you know, she was like seeing like, you know, like immobility. People were able to like to move their knees again. And then there was my line. Have you ever been grocery shopping and then you think you chose the right checkout line that'll be the quickest and the best? Then you realize it's the worst checkout line? I was that lane. <laughs> This is real. I was praying with my eyes open. And I'm praying for people. And as I'm, as I'm praying for the person in front of me, I'm seeing, this is real, people in my line leave my line to go to other lines. That really happened. So I am not excited about this moment. And if I'm very deeply like vulnerable with you and very honest, every person that I prayed for that wasn't getting better, it validated a lie that I believed that I'm not good enough for this. I'm not spiritual enough to pray for the sick. I'm not holy enough. I'm not like old enough. I'm not like pastor enough, whatever that even means. And so I started having this belief system and every person who wasn't getting better, it solidified this internal struggle of saying, I'm not enough for God to use me yet. And so I had these ideas of, I guess maybe I'll have to pray a lot more, read a lot more, fast a lot more. And those are great things to do to be just a healthier believer. But the truth is, is Jesus loves to heal the sick through anybody. But so after all of these people, probably 20, 30 people have praying for them and nothing is getting better, 
I'd convinced myself I am absolutely done with this. And not just for that night, but probably for a very long time. And so I said, I'll pray for one more person, then I'm out of here. Then this lady, uh, she walks up to me, but rather she actually is limping up to me. She ended up telling me she has an issue with her left hip. She's had it as a, some birth defect, and she's had it ever since she was born. And so for her entire life, doctors have not been able to fix it. She has never been able to walk, run, jump without severe pain in her leg. She has been limping her entire life. And all I could think of was, you chose the wrong line. <laughs> I'm like, you, you should have chose the other ones. I'm like, oh my goodness. And so I, I started praying for her, and nothing happened. And then I was like, I had this genius idea. Well, I'll just pray like the people next to me because they're, they're having great results. So I start praying really loudly like the guy next to me, but that scared her, so that didn't help. And then I prayed really quietly like the lady next to me, but then the person I was praying for, she couldn't hear me, so that was ineffective as well. And so I'm trying all of these different ideas, trying to make something happen, and then eventually I come to the place and I'm like, God, I can't do this, but I think you can do this. So I, I, just, I pray you would do it, you know, even, even without me in a way. So my like, God, it's, it's all on you, not on me. And so I pray for her. I say, in the name of Jesus, would you be healed? And the craziest thing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. And I was so frustrated because I was like, this is, what this is like, this is the equation. Like I try on my own and then I give it to Jesus. And then Jesus sweeps in at the last minute and takes care of it all. But in this moment, nothing happened. She looked at me and she's like, well, thanks. And I was like, I don't know what you're thanking me for. Nothing has happened. I'm so sorry. And then she takes one step to the left and I hear this loud popping sound and her, her hip literally popped back into place for the first time in her entire life. And so she literally stepped into her healing and then she starts jumping, running and going all over the place. And then she comes up, gives me the biggest hug and says, you have no idea. I haven't had no pain in my leg like this for my entire life. This is the first time in my life I've been able to run and jump without any pain ever. And she was like, thank you so much. I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> but I, mo five seconds before this moment, I was already like kind of stepping out of this. I was already stepping out of the line, ready to never really pray for someone who is sick for maybe years from now. But all it took me was one random moment with Jesus to see that, man, I don't need to check out based on just the evidence that I'm currently seeing. And so I then, instead of leaving, I ended up staying for three more hours. And after seeing that one person healed, I saw like 40 or 50 people get healed in that one night. One after another, after another, after another. And so what we're going to do is a really similar thing tonight. At the end of this teaching time, and just really a couple minutes from now, we're going to pray for one another. And if you're here and you're like, oh, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't really like to pray for people. It makes me feel weird. Um, I want to just lovingly give you some advice. Uh, get over yourself. Okay? All right. Love you so much. But so often, honestly, the deeper root of that isn't just that we're worried. What you're really believing is that it actually has anything to do with you. And it has literally nothing to do with you. It's all on Jesus. He's already paid the price. So just swipe the gift card, man. Like you don't have to beg God to use you because he already wants to use you. And you don't have to beg God to receive healing that he's already paid the price for on the cross. It says by his stripes, we were made heal and made whole. But I know in a room with this many people, there's different faith backgrounds that come into a service like this, a moment like this. And you've maybe been taught that this doesn't happen, or maybe you've had certain phrases. And let me start off by teaching a common misconception that people I hear say all the time. And let me tell you this, is that God doesn't make you sick. God does not make you sick. There are some people who would say, oh, well, this is the, the phrase I hear sometimes. Well, I'm sick, but God is just trying to teach me a lesson. No way. <laughs> that is not a loving God. Uh, man, God is not trying to push you down so he can get the credit for picking you back up when he heals you. God does not make you sick because really God is a healer, not a harmer. And what we understand is this, is that every time we see Jesus do anything, it is a representation of God's character. And so in Matthew chapter 10, verse eight, Jesus is saying this. He says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Let's pause. Look to the person next to you. Say, get out. All right, we good? Okay, I was, um, I was worried about some of you, but I guess we're good. I guess the demon part is good. And that says this, freely you've received, 
so freely give. Jesus is saying this commandment of heal the sick. Jesus is not going to contradict the character of God by God making people sick that Jesus is then going to heal. God is a healer, not a harmer. God is a healer, not a harmer. And we're going to get into this. And at the end of service, I believe many of us are going to receive a touch from God of healing. But let me say it like this. Just because you get healed does not mean you stop going to the doctor, okay? So I pray for healing all the time. I've had God touch my life in so many different ways, but I still have a doctor. I have a dentist. I hate him, but it's fine. We're working on that relationship. We're trying to grow it. Like I have a therapist. I have all the things. And let me say this, man, they help me so much. People can help you, but only Jesus can heal you. And if anything, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. But if anything... Going to the doctor, waiting to stop to take your prescription until the doctor tells you to, doesn't make the miracle smaller. It actually makes the miracle way bigger. Because then you have actual, man, you have a better, man, scientific medical evidence to, that actually makes the, the miracle a lot bigger. So we're not doing things just because we feel like the Lord touched me, so I'm going to stop taking my medicine. I don't want you to do that because I don't want you to die. Okay? Thank you. So no one wants to do that. But here's what God does want to happen is God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. Uh, Psalm 103, 2 through 3 says this, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of your sins and heals all of your diseases. I love this verse for a bunch of reasons. And it actually made me think of a couple of years ago, my wife was, um, was getting asked to do another job. And in that job negotiation, the negotiation, it talked about salary and benefits. And we actually have friends who have jobs just for the benefits. We totally understand that. And it kind of made me think of this verse because here's what I love is as believers, as humans, we don't just receive, man, we don't just receive the salary of salvation, but we all become benefactors of God's benefits that we can be healed of all of our diseases as well. And so God wants to heal us. God wants to heal us. And on the other side of this, God wants us as believers to heal others around us. James 5, 14 through 16 says this, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Man, I love this moment. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And faith has a lot to do with healing and tonight. It has a really big deal. Uh, there's, there's, um, there's two numbers I want you to think about tonight. It's 12 and 19. 12 and 19. 12 and 19, I think this is really interesting, is there are 19 times in the Bible where Jesus is, is healing someone on a one-to-one. -one. It's Jesus and another person. There's 19 times where this happens in the Bible. 12 out of the 19 times, Jesus says the same exact thing, 12 out of 19 times, which is the majority of the time. Jesus ends the healing moment with this. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Raise your hand if you've read that before in the word. Yeah, I, I, yeah, for sure. And here's what's wild to me is that the majority of time in Jesus' one-to-one -one ministry, it, Jesus is saying it has more to do with sometimes our faith than just what he's doing. I mean, it's all the faith in what he's doing. But I mean, I love that he says that our faith is making us well. And so the question is this, well, then how do we grow in our faith? How do we grow in our faith for healing? And there's really two ways, and they both come from Holy Spirit. There are fruits and there are gifts. There are nine fruits of Holy Spirit and there are nine gifts of Holy Spirit, which I think is really interesting. And there is one that is synonymous. There's one that is in common and that is faithfulness. There's the fruit of faithfulness that grows over time, like all fruits. And then there's the gift of great faith that's given to us in a moment. We're gonna talk through those two things in a moment, uh, just for, for a moment. And so let's talk about like uh, fruit for a moment. So I grew up in Midland, Michigan, pretty familiar with that. And I grew up uh, and every morning at my bus stop, which was my driveway, I would stand in my driveway and I would look at, right across the street was this very small farm, very small. But every morning, you know, in the early morning waiting for school, I would almost always see the farmer kind of tending to his field, his crops, doing whatever. And I never saw this. I never saw the farmer walk out to his field, look down at it and say, crops, grow right now. I never saw him yell at them. I never thought, so I'm trying to speed up the process by yelling at them, which I think is funny because yet so many believers, we try to pray in the fruits of Holy Spirit and not develop them, which is how they usually come to us. 
Fruits are made to develop over time in seasons and sometimes even in seconds. But man, I believe this, that some of us have been growing in faith and maybe you don't even know it yet. Maybe you don't even know it yet. And I believe even some of us will start tonight our faith journey for this. So let's say a kind of an example would be this of how we grow in this faith. Let's say tonight, uh, we're praying for people. And let's say someone comes up and you are completely blind. And I, and I pray for you. Uh, we've seen God do this before. No big deal for Jesus. No big deal for us. No big deal. So they come up to you. I would say one of you comes up. You're completely blind. I pray for you. You're healed. Praise Jesus. Then a second one of you comes up to me tonight. You are also completely blind. I pray for you. You're healed. Praise Jesus. Then a third person tonight comes up. You are also completely blind. At this moment, I would have a stop drinking the water in Saginaw. Okay? Like, this is strange. And then they are also completely healed and they can see and it's amazing. Here's my question. Who do you think I would have more faith for when praying for them? The first person or the third person? And from, yeah, the third person. Why? Because I've already seen God do this before. And so for many of us, we can grow in our faith by seeing God do things and the faith grows over time because I've already seen God do this before. There are some things that I, I need so little faith for because to me, I've seen it so many times, it's no longer faith, it's just fact for me. I've seen more back sealed than any other thing in my entire life. I've been praying for the sick for a good little bit now, a bunch of years. I've probably seen thousands and thousands of back sealed. So when someone comes up to me tonight and they say they have an issue with their back, I just get excited. I want to kind of rush to praying because I've already seen God do this. So I have faith for you based on my previous experiences. And so one way that we can grow in our faith is by our past experiences. And some of us will have a new experience tonight, whether it's by having experience for you, through you, or seeing it through others. And the other way is this, is that we can grow our faith by having a, a gift of faith. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, I list um, all these books, all these, uh, one of the books I have, The Holy Spirit's on a Bird, goes through all of the gifts of Holy Spirit. And one of them is great faith. And in some moments, I believe even for many of us tonight, you are all of a sudden in a situation and without anything else all of a sudden happening, you have this really great amount of faith believing for something, even if you've never seen it before. And so what I love about this is that we can be given this in a moment. And so whether you get a gift or a fruit, what we really have to do with it is we just have to use it. We need to use our faith. So the last question is this, before we start praying for one another, is this, well, if faith is a big deal in regards to healing, then how much faith do I need? How much faith do I need? And I want to tell you a story about when I was in Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. Raise your hand if you've ever been to Mobile, Alabama. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, there's like two of you. Uh, I had never been to Mobile, Alabama, but I did my first ever service kind of like this in Mobile, Alabama. And I was really excited about it. You know, we saw all of these cool miracles and healings. And if I can, my friends in the band make their way up, that'd be super awesome just to transition to a time of prayer in a moment. But here's what I love as I was doing this service, it was amazing. We saw all of these healings. I was pumped up. And then I looked to my far left and I saw this person sitting, man, sitting on the far side, kind of where my friend Ashley is, and their arms were crossed and they were shaking their head no. And they made a face I had seen previously in my life. And that faith, the face was this. He made a face when he was looking at me like he wanted to punch me in the face, okay? He looked very angry. And so I told God, I will pray for everybody tonight, just not him, okay? That was like, that was my rule. Then I got this thing called a nudge, say the nudge. And I felt like God was saying, hey, I want you to go pray for someone. And I was like, okay. And he's like, take a guess who it is. And I'm like, and you probably already know where this is going. I felt like God was saying, hey, I want you to go pray for the person who looks really angry at you. And I was like, fine, because his ways are better than my ways anyway. So I walk over to the guy and I say, hey man, um, is everything okay? And he's like, no, man, I, 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 just, I just don't know. And I was like, well, what, what don't you know, my friend? And he's like, well, there's all these testimonies going on. There's all these healings that people are talking about. But he's like, this just seems, I love this. He said, this just seems too good to be true. And I said, I totally agree with you. I think it's wild that not only does God love us so much that he sent his son to die for us, but on top of that, he gives us more than just salvation, which is the best thing. I mean, he gives us Holy Spirit to empower us. And he, he does this thing, this wild thing where he heals us and heals others through us. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And yet God does it because he loves us so much. And then as I'm kind of talking with him, chatting with him, all of a sudden, I felt this nudge. I felt this thing called a word of knowledge. 
uh, where God gives us information where we would not normally know about it. And any believer can walk through this. Any believer can walk through this. But I said, hey man, this might be really weird. This might be nothing to you. But I have this weird thing that something's wrong with like the very bottom of your back. Does that mean anything to you? And he laughs at me. He's like, ha, okay, whatever, dude. And I was like, what is going on? And then he's like, everybody knows about this. And I said, I don't live here. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even know your name. And he's like, well, everybody knows I have, I, have, I have problems with my body. And he's sitting down and he ends up showing me and he puts out both of his legs. And he shows me that one of his legs is, is, been, is six inches shorter than the other leg. And so he said, it's been like that for his entire life growing up. All of a sudden when he was a little kid, he realized it and he has to wear special shoes with it. And so he, for his entire life, he's been walking for a, a better, for lack of better words, kind of lopsided. So for every step he's taking, it's creating pain in his lower back. And so for most of his life, he's been in pain as he walks every single day. And so I said, well, hey man, could, could I pray for you? And he's led, he said, sure. Say sure. sure. Yeah. He, he wasn't pumped about it, but he said, sure. And so I prayed for him. And in this moment, this is kind of random, but just kind of some context is in this service. And this happens in a lot of services like tonight. And it's totally okay if tonight you want to just kind of watch and see what God does. It's as I was praying for people, there's a couple of people from a, a little bit of a distance. They were kind of watching and seeing what God was doing. It's kind of fun to watch what God does. And so there's three people kind of standing a little bit close to me. But I, I put my hand on my friend's shoulder. And if I'm very honest, I looked the other direction because I was nervous out of my mind. <laughs> I never seen God do this. I never heard of this before. And so I was like, I'm, I'm just, I was scared to be totally honest. This is a bunch of years ago, uh, man, this is like 2015. And so I'm like, I was like really scared. My first time ever doing a service like this. So I put my hand on his shoulder and I prayed just like this. I said, God, you, you know what I don't know. And I pray if you could do this, I think you can. I pray that you would heal my friend's back. I pray that you would make it feel better. And right when I said that, the three people who were watching, they all at the same time made this loud gasping sound. So I'm praying, all of a sudden I hear this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, his leg is gone. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't know, I never prayed for this before. I don't know if I did something wrong, I have no idea. But so I take a couple steps back, trying to see what's happening, what's wrong. And then I realized why they had freaked out is because before their eyes, they literally saw his leg grow out three inches, which is absolutely wild to me. And here's, here's the thing, there's really two things. One's a funny thing and one is a serious thing. We'll start with the funny thing. I am so glad that God made the one leg longer and not the other leg shorter. <laughs> Imagine walking into service tonight. You go out, you come in like this, and you leave like this. That'd be pretty frustrating. Like, I'd be glad that I'm healed, but like, a little frustrated too. So, I mean, I love that God gives us bonuses. He doesn't just do the minimum. And so, I love that. But then the other thing, if I'm very honest with you, one of the greatest regrets in my ministry life, in my faith life, is I wish I would have watched it happen. I wish my faith would have been all in. I wish it would have been all in. Because here's the thing, so many times I expect God to do a, a, a good bit, but he wants to do more than I can ever ask, seek, or imagine. And let me say it like this, God wants what you want more than you even want it. So much more. I want you actually to do this. If you can raise both of your hands, raise both of your hands. Okay, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Now as high as you possibly can. Okay, you feel that? Okay, you can put them down. But isn't it interesting the difference between often what we initially do and what we're actually capable of doing? And God doesn't want us to go into a moment like this, just like kind of haphazardly with our hands kind of raised up. He wants us to be fully in to what he wants us to do. And so the question is this, how much faith do we need tonight to receive prayer for healing or to pray for one another? Man, I love what my friend said, my friend in Mobile, Alabama. I think he showed us a really good metric for this. He didn't say yes to prayer. He didn't say no. You know what he said? He said, sure. He said, sure. And here's what I know, sure is enough. Man, sure enough, sure is enough. Man, you're sure to Jesus, he will give you a 100% yes back to you. And so tonight, if you'll just say sure to Jesus, he will say yes to you. I believe it. And, and if you've prayed for something forever, man, tonight's a really good day to keep praying for that thing. And maybe you think it's a really small deal and God doesn't care. Or maybe you think it's a really big deal and it's like almost like, like too big for God. Let me say this. If you have a big issue, it's small to God. And if you have a small issue, it's a big deal to God. Man, nothing's too small and nothing is too big. He wants to take care of it. And tonight, we're not gonna measure our sicknesses. And so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray through a couple things. And I'm gonna kind of walk us through uh, really practically how we're gonna do this. We're gonna, we're gonna, in a moment, I'm gonna pray us into this moment. In a moment, if you, if you need healing physically, spiritually, or emotionally, 
and emotionally is okay. Man, anxiety and depression is just as real to Jesus as a broken leg and he wants to heal. He totally wants to heal. So in a moment, when I say amen to a prayer in the future, uh, I'll have you, if you need prayer, to come up and kind of make a single file line just in the altar space, just so it makes it really easy uh, to pray for one another. And then for all of us, man, I'm not the only person who's gonna pray. I'll pray for as many people as I can, for sure. I'm here all night. But the goal is for us to be empowered. We were empowered this morning to be a witness. And tonight, you're gonna witness yourself do things you've never done before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, you can clap a little bit, but here's what I need you to do. I need you to do more than just clap for yourself. I need you to actually do something for yourself and in a moment to step out in your faith because you're gonna see people coming up. And as you see people coming up, I want you to ask Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? And I almost promise you, he's gonna show you someone to pray for. And I want in a moment when people are up here for no one to be alone, because no one should be alone. No one should be alone. And here's how we're gonna pray. Okay, here's how we're gonna pray. And we'll have it on the screen. We'll have it this whole time. Is this, we're gonna ask this, hey, can I pray for you? Pretty simple. If they say no, leave them alone, okay? Leave them alone, uh, for real, uh, leave them alone. But you know what you do? You're just gonna take a couple steps back and pray for them from a distance. Most people tonight will probably say yes. So, hey, can I pray for you? And then the question we're gonna ask them is not, hey, what are you sick with? We're not gonna talk about what's happened in the past negative. We're gonna talk in the future positive of what we believe God's going to do. And so we're gonna ask the question, what are you believing God for? What are you believing God for? And what we're really doing in this moment, in any moment, we're activating both their and my faith, my, you know, your faith and our, our faith, so that we're not going into this just talking about the long story of our sickness and ailments. Honestly, in real love, I just don't really care that much. I don't care about your sickness compared to how much I care about the healing that Jesus has for that sickness. So even when we talk about the sickness, we're just gonna say, hey, here's what's going on with me in like a sentence. We don't need the whole story because the goal is that in moments from now, we start the healing journey to ending that story anyways. Well, I want that story to be a boring story in a couple minutes. And then we're gonna pray like we normally do. We're gonna pray like we normally talk in our car on the way home. And then after that, we're gonna ask them how they're feeling. This is kind of where the real faith kicks in. How are you feeling? And regardless of what they say, pray one more time and just bless their life. Everything we're gonna do when we pray for one another is gonna be positive, affirming, encouraging, and loving to them. So in a moment, we're gonna pray for one another. If you're down to pray for people, say, heck yes. Okay, good. Okay, so, all right, can you all stand to your feet if you're physically able to? And if not, it's no big deal. If you have a physical issue and you need prayer and you can't stand up for a long time, just kind of in a moment or later, later on, just kind of wave us down. I'll be here all night. I'll pray for everybody. And here's the thing. I will personally, I'll make sure I pray for every single person, but the goal is not for Ty Buckingham to pray for you. The goal is for us to have an encounter with Jesus. And whether it's me who gets used or Pastor Kurt or the friend or even, catch this, the person you hate the most in church, I'm for real. And you might even be called to pray for the person you dislike the most in here. Because God might want to break something more than just, just sickness. He might want to break something called bitterness, which creates sickness anyways. And so I'm going to pray for us. But really quick, what sickness is to our body, sin is to our soul. So I want to give us a quick opportunity for this. Every head bowed, every eye closed, just real quick. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one's looking around. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus or you've said, hey, I need to give my life back to Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you need to give your life back to Jesus or you need to give your life to Jesus for the first time, no one's looking around. I just want to know who I'm praying for. If that's you, and before we get into the praying for each other, I want us to be able to pray for ourselves if we need salvation. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, if that's you, you need to give your life to Jesus, can you just raise your hands so I know who I'm praying for? Awesome, 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 awesome. Hands up all over the place. It's super cool, super cool. All right, praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you can put your hands down. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the same thing we did this morning for like the five, six people who just said, I need, I need salvation in my life. I need to give my life to Jesus. The Bible says this, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. So we're gonna pray this all together as a church family. Let's all say this together. Say, Jesus, I know you're pursuing me. I know you died and rose again for me. I'm gonna follow you the rest of my life. I pray you'd forgive me of my sin. Help me to walk away from it. Help me to follow you the rest of my life. I'm all in. I'm all in. 
Amen. Awesome. Can we give it up for the people who just said yes to Jesus? It's the best thing. All right, so now we're going to pray. And there's a couple things I feel personally led to pray for. I'll pray for everybody, but there's a couple people. And if this is you, just let me know in the moment when I'm praying for you. Uh, if you have scoliosis in your in your body, uh, in your back, I would love to pray for you. I've seen scoliosis healed so much. I just have a lot of faith for that. Also, if you're losing sight in your left eye, I just have weird faith for you. Uh, I really feel like that might be somebody here. And then if you're here and you've been given uh, an ailment or an issue where you've been told this cannot get better, I would love to introduce you to someone who can make it totally better. I just have a really big faith for things that are incurable because I've seen God cure it so many times. And it's not because of me, it's because of who I have faith in. And here's the best part. What I can do, you can do in the same exact way. My, my, I'm gonna pray over you. And I think it's gonna be an amazing night tonight. And so here's what I want us to do if we can all bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're here tonight and you'd say, hey, I want God to use me to be a better witness. I believe some of you are gonna witness God do something that's gonna help you be a better witness. I think some of you are gonna witness God using you. He's gonna be using others. But tonight, this morning, this morning was about being empowered to be a witness. Tonight is actually witnessing God doing things. So we're gonna be empowered to be a witness because if in real honesty, tonight is the training ground for what's gonna happen in your work, in your home, man, going out to eat. And I promise you this, if you start praying for the sick, you will start seeing a lot of sick people. Because if you know that God can use you to heal somebody, how much do you have to hate somebody not to pray for them? And so after tonight, I believe you're gonna pray for so many people and see so many miracles. I pray that even this church would be known for the miracles that come outside of it. And so if you're here and you'd say, I want God to use me to pray for the sick, to heal the sick, could you just lift your hands as high as you can? Because I just wanna pray over you. And God, you see all these hands, you see all these people, man, you ordained this moment. And so God, I pray right now that you would touch all of my friends' hands. You, it says in the word, lay your, hand, you know, lay your hands on the sick and they, and they will recover. They will recover, not that they might, but that they will. And God, I pray that you would use the hands that are raised right now from the very front row to the very back row in the balcony. God, I pray that you would use people tonight. God, would you use me? But God, would you use them? Would you use all of us? And may tonight be a, a launching catalyst point for a life of seeing healing. Whether you are 14 or 114, God wants to heal you. God wants to heal through you. I pray that tonight would be an amazing night of healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you're here and you need any healing physically, spiritually, emotionally, I would love to pray with you and we would all love to pray for each other. So if that's you, if you could just kind of step forward, kind of come up into the altar, make a single file line and we're going to worship God and pray and it's going to be amazing. If we can keep the volume a little bit lower for worship, that'd be really helpful so I don't lose, we don't all lose our voices and, and scream at each other the entire time. But if we're going to pray, we're going to get as close to God as we can. And healing is a process, not just a one-time event. Some of us, it's gonna be really quick, really fast, it's gonna be amazing. But here's what I love. There's all these people up here. This is your time to say, Holy Spirit, who do you want me to pray for? And then walk up to them. Who can I pray for? You know, what, how can I, can I pray for you? What do you believe in God for? And then just go off the script and then be empowered by God. You've totally got this. I'll get back on the mic in a couple moments, but you've totally got this. And if you're up here needing prayer, crazy thing. You can also pray for the people next to you. It's the most wild thing in the world. We're all in this together. 